I'm super excited to talk to y'all today. Um, Gremlins has been one of the shows I have been waiting for. Um, and I wanted to start off with asking how each of you gets into character to perform your voices in the series. So for Isaac, that's you as Sam. Gabrielle, that's sorry, that's you as Elle. And of course, AJ as the iconic Gizmo. <laughs> <laughs> so if y'all could each kind of talk about that, we'd start with Isaac. Uh, I mean, I don't really know. I kind of just go in there and, and talk in a mic for a few hours. You are and... that character. I feel like that's so unlikely. Of... I, I I am him. Just yeah. To... Yeah. <laughs> I mean, not, I mean, not really. I mean, the only thing I guess I really had to do was just like from my most recent memories is just pitch up the crap out of my voice. So I have to talk like this the whole time. It's like a absolute pain because you know my voice is a lot deeper than what it used to be. So. Other than that, not not much really. I mean, just read the script and just kind of get in character and I'm good. And for you, Gabrielle? Yeah, you know, I just talk into a microphone. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you always got the um, easy jobs. <laughs> <laughs> At the time when I booked the project, I was working on a show called All That and it was really wacky, really outside of the box. And this was kind of the opposite. So I really just kind of, focused on grounding myself and thinking about her mindset um, because it's very different than my own personal mindset. She had a really rough life. Um, she has a lot of emotional barriers that you see throughout the series that Sam and Gizmo really help with. But I, I would say the biggest challenge was probably just making sure I was grounded in my performance. Wow, that makes me sound like an ass. I mean, uh, no, I'm a really <laughs> bad person. Can't say that. <laughs> I can't say that. I'm sorry. Um, I, I mean, for me, it's just a matter of I do a lot of warming up in the car where I'm just like, and doing that kind of stuff. So it's a lot of that. Um, I try to do vocal warm ups and I know I should do more, but uh, you know, it's mostly just me singing Moulin Rouge in the car alone to get <laughs> character. Um, and then also just listening. I listen to a lot of the lullaby, uh, which is super high pitched. So me practicing that and dreading the day I would have to do it. Um, so yeah, it's really just a matter of just getting my voice up there, but it's a voice I've done my whole life. So it's, it's always kind of available, knock on wood. <laughs> <laughs> and when you say that it's a voice you've done your whole life, have you always been a fan of Gremlins and Gizmo? Yes. It's funny, though. The Bobby's World was probably the show that I was always imitating. Bo I, do you guys, anyone know Bo with Howie Mandel? OK, so yep. I would imitate Bobby as a kid. And my dad used to do a like a puppet show with my stuffed animals. So he would do one of the voices sounded like Gizmo, um, a dinosaur named Baby Bronto, who's a little brontosaurus. And uh, he was just like, oh, I'm so proud of my and so it was just, and so I picked up on that. And uh, he'll be thrilled to hear me say this on camera. He's like, you're gonna tell people that I did that voice, right? And I'm like, yes. <laughs> um, so it's uh, it's something that's always been around, uh, but I never ever ever thought that it would be something outside of a voice that would annoy my girlfriend. So. <laughs> <laughs> And for Isaac and Gabrielle, were you all fans of Gremlins before, you know, becoming a part of the franchise? Do you want to go first or? <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know. I mean. You'll be the human I'm, sacrifice. You go first. I'll be the human <laughs> sacrifice. Uh, uh, I mean, like, I didn't really watch the film much. Uh, I was kind of just like, I mean, I, I did watch it once when I was really young, so I didn't really know that much about it. And then when I actually finally got into it, I was kind of just like, oh wow, that's a very large fan base. I should probably do a little bit more research. And then I did end up doing more research. And so, yeah, now I'm a pretty big fan of it. You know, I mean, not the biggest fan in the world. I'm not like a fanatic, uh, but it's, I have common knowledge. I could talk to a Gremlins <laughs> fan, I think. Yeah, I mean, I, it was actually kind of by chance. My dad put it on for a family movie night a couple of weeks before I got the audition. Um, and it was a really great introductory horror film. I don't like scary things, but this was kind of right down my alley. It was a family film that was scary. It, you know, people were being eaten and all kinds of crazy things were happening. So it was a really great introductory horror film for me um, at 13. And, you know, I didn't really realize that Gremlins had such a huge fan base until Comic-Con. Um, that was oh, yeah. an eye <laughs> um, because I hadn't, I hadn't witnessed a, 
a mass amount of people before that were so enthralled with a series or or a a film like like Gremlins. So it was eye opening for me. But yeah, I I by chance saw the film as a family movie night, and then uh, it kind of worked out hand in hand. So how does it feel for you all to be kind of the next generation of gremlins for people? Like you're going to be people's first gremlins moment um, and bringing them into this, you know, this franchise and this fandom that's been around for generations. Uh, we can start with AJ. Word it like oh. that, I'd like to have a group <laughs> panic attack. Like that's <laughs> scary to think of when you when you phrase it like that. But yeah. Um, it's it, great. I mean, it's amazing, but it's also very scary. I mean, I just hope people enjoy it and love it. And, you know, it's whenever you make something like this, you're just like, God, we love it. Uh, and so I just hope other people take to it the way we have and, and appreciate all the hard work we've put in over the last four years. But it's uh, surreal is probably the best way to describe it. Very, very, very surreal. We can go to Gabrielle next. <laughs> I think there's something really cool about it. I mean, whenever you do something like this, it's always a risk, especially with mm -hmm. introducing new characters like Elle. You never know how fans are going to respond to it. But I think there's something really enlightening about bringing something from my parents' childhood, from AJ's childhood, back into the 20th, 20th century? 2020. The 2020 era. I don't know um, what century it is. Bringing it for kids now. 21st. Um, 21st. Yeah. <laughs> That's, yeah, thank you for that. From um, the 1900s. <laughs> but I think there's something really cool about bringing something from my parents' childhood to the childhood of others. Um, yeah. And of course, there's always going to be pressure of entering such a, such a huge fan base. But I think people are really going to enjoy this. It's something for the adults, and it's also something for the kids, too. Yeah, I can definitely agree with that. Awesome. I mean, Do you have anything really... else to add, Isaac? Or <laughs> I mean, I can't really add anything else. My yeah. thoughts are the exact same. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Like, you know, I mean, it's a. It, I mean, Sam is technically a new character. It's just like an old character, just like revised. So you know, I mean, kind of scary. There's a lot of eye. There's a lot of eyeballs. Eyeballs looking at all of us. So. uh do I, I'd love to hear from each of you as we wrap up. Um, do you have a scene that you're really excited for people to see that you got to voice? Um, we could start with Gabrielle. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> no spoilers. I, yeah, there's a scene that I can't really, I can't really describe to you, but it's really, it's, it's a good scene because you see why Elle is the way that she is. Um, you see what happened to her as a child and you see what, causes her to kind of act out and steal things and be a quote, bad person. Um, and you kind of realize that she's not really a bad person. She just is, is returning the energy that the world has brought upon her. So hopefully when you guys watch that scene, you'll kind of feel the energy of that. And um, hopefully it tells a story that everything happens for a reason. And it's, it's about how you bounce back from it. I think a scene that I'm uh, pretty excited for is something that's going to become a lot later. Uh, it's going to be going to take a while, uh, but you never know. But it's a pretty good scene. It's a scene that really shows how much Sam has evolved. So yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah, it's so hard because we can't spoil anything. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's there's some stuff with Gizmo uh, at some point where we get to see a little bit more of his range. Uh, is it probably the best way I could describe it, where I get to kind of play around. I mean, every episode is a different challenge where if I'm doing one of the evil gremlins mm -hmm. or something, or evil Mogwai, I forget what we're calling him, gremlins, uh, <laughs> there's a range of stuff that happens. So I don't know, each episode had something fun where I'd be cackling or, you know, whatever. So <laughs> it's all good. It's all It's all fun. Uh, yeah, that was the worst answer. We can't spoil <laughs> anything, so what can we say? <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you all so much for your time today. Of course. Thank you. <laughs>